All right, but let's start out uh, today with uh, the problem with the Hull Sea from Space Tomato. It's Star Citizen's new ship might have a problem. Uh, yeah, it's really big, you know? Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of problems for it, and I think it's going to kill the servers. That, that's the first problem. Let's not even talk about the economy. Star Citizen has always aimed to be a game of scale. You may feel great about carrying 700 SCU of boxes down to the city to sell, but in a very short amount of time, that scale will increase to over 4,500 SCU with the introduction wow. of the MISC hulls. Yeah, just that... That right there, what just happened is... Okay. See. And the whole sea is not the largest bulk transporter coming to the game, but you won't be taking this ship down to the city to sell. And the current economy is very obviously not ready for that kind of scale anyways. Most cargo haulers know. So today, let's look at the hull sea problem with the economy, how cargo hauling will get flipped on its head to accommodate, and when this all might happen. Thank you. It's not happening in 320. Spoiler alert. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Everything they've communicated the so actually far one of those ship is to not be excited by this thing from a cargo hauling economics standpoint. Everything they've communicated so far is get excited about the ship, the way it looks, the internals. The For me, the fact that they like kind of band-aid fixed a way to fill it. Uh, and that's it. That has been ready for years in terms of design, but the engineering that needed to go into making the ship actually work meant it couldn't launch in 2017 or 2018 back when we were seeing it in engine. Or 2019 or 2020 or 2021 or 2022 or 2023. This ship features huge collapsing spindles that carry your cargo boxes. These spindles required a huge amount of engineering wizardry to get the physics grid that hold the boxes to move together and not intersect one another. The dev who worked on this spent three years planning, collaborating, and working on the ship just to get this functionality. This sort of unnecessary detail is part of why I like the game so much, but it can- But it's also like, the three years that dev worked on this thing, I mean, on and off most likely, he, what, what else could he have been doing? Did we, do we actually need this? Definitely be annoying to some. That's not to mention the translating walkway that I follows the some. path of the ship leading to the engineering segment. It's all been a huge undertaking to get working smoothly in a game with an unfinished engine and physics system. Apparently, this work has helped with figuring out modular systems as well. So, you know, we love those knock-on effects. And while we've seen this same transforming functionality work with the Hull A, this ship carries an absolutely unreasonable amount of cargo that needs to be stored in larger 32 SCU boxes, which we still don't have. Not only will these larger boxes likely require the use of large- I mean, you could say we still don't have them, but they did show them on the ship in the update. So like, should I think we can expect them. I think it's fair, right? So we technically- have them so there's that Their size three tractor beams found on ships and vehicles they also carry a lot of goods have you ever tried to buy a large amount of commodities it doesn't work very well because as of right now all servers dip into the same resource pool which isn't exactly sized for large cargo ships planning inter-system deliveries because you know still only one system this is the first part of the hull sea problem and a major worry that many people have after waiting years for the ship, thinking that an updated economy would join the whole sea in game when ready. Will the rafts work? I don't know. We've been seeing quite a few mentions of the quantum economy simulation in recent monthly reports, so we know there's work going on. But we haven't seen an update on their plans for the economy since environmental missions took advantage of probability volumes last year. Yeah, but I'm, listen, they have two days to fill. A single day could be a Tony Z PowerPoint where he just says, you know, for uh, about eight hours straight. So I think we could totally uh, envision seeing another PowerPoint presentation about how uh, awesome the Star Citizen economy will be, but never actually experience it. Before that, refuel, rearm, and repair services were linked into dynamic pricing structures, though you've probably not noticed. 
No. And while we were told there would be subsequent up and, and the way Tomato said it was like you probably I don't think he said it that way, but uh he took it a way that I wouldn't go. You didn't notice because it barely does anything. Right? Like should I should I you know get in game one of these days and just buy and sell fuel like uh buy and sell fuel at different stations and see what it's what it costs to refuel a ship or something right versus like what are the prices i it, i don't think it makes a difference or the prices are so low for the fuel that even if it went up by 10% you wouldn't notice uh there's only certain ships where fuel is like really expensive so like MSR kind of thing. Updates to Quantum in every patch. Following that, and it's like they 5, haven't 000. been pointed it's out to us. not even that expensive. So with so little discussion surrounding the actual economy in the lead up to this change to cargo hauling, players are feeling unsure. And with a recent Inside Star Citizen episode not being incredibly clear on what might happen to support the Hull Sea, this part of the problem still threatens to make the arrival of the Hull Sea less than expected. Then there's the other side of the issue. Due to the size of the ship when delivering cargo, it won't be able to land at outposts and cities on planets to offload that cargo. Yeah, this is where I want to see but where this he, what he says. this actually isn't a problem. It's more of an acknowledgement of the game's design. As we progress, yeah. the idea of transporting goods will be split up into separate categories. You'll have some ships, like the Hull C, D, and E, transporting goods from one space station or one star system to another. And you'll have other ships like the Hull A and B, Caterpillars and Starlifters to then distribute goods from these large cargo stations down to planetary outposts, cities, and underground facilities that they've been building in the meantime. Yeah, like this was always the intended feature uh, was that the the cargo deck stations above the the main cities were like these major they were they were essentially the ports, Port Alisar right things like that right they're essentially the ports that we see like container ports that we see in the world today is these huge container ships that can't go on rivers or uh roads right they they distribute huge amounts of things and then everything else goes and gets distributed like with smaller uh 18 wheelers and things like that right so that's what was always sort of intended, but they never really made that gameplay at all. And I, I really don't think we're going to see that gameplay in three uh, in three twenty either. Uh, I think we're going to see a test of it, but a very uninteresting one, uh, unfortunately. This is based on the idea of economic nodes in the economy that persist on all planetary bodies and both produce and consume various goods and commodities. These can be factories, refineries, mining facilities, shops, points of interest, or space stations. The players who want to run long-distance trucking expeditions with combat... Because, I mean, here's the perfect reason why, right? Do you see what this is? This is a Hurston factory. So you're going to be bringing commodities like if you're going to do like these l big long haul um you know hull sea type things in the future you would imagine it would be bringing commodities like copper gold titanium quantanium whatever right uh but a lot of commodity type things in bulk bringing them bringing them to the uh uh, what's above it? Everus Harbor. And then Everus Harbor will create missions or whatever for uh, smaller ships like Freelancers and Hull A's and Hull B's and whatever to go down to the Hurston factory and deliver these commodities to the factory. Then what does the factory do? The factory then creates what Hurston makes. So Hurston Dynamics makes weapons, right? So the weapons then would be stored in a box and then vice versa. Hurston would create a mission and say, deliver 32 SCU of ship weapons to Everus Harbor. And then what should happen is the whole sea could take bulk weapons to another location that wants to buy them, right? And that's why, like, Quanta is so exciting. Like, think about all the steps that could happen there. And then add in your own factories or your own crafting or whatever, right? And that's still why I think no matter how long or how stupid or how 
problematic this update has been, I think we all know that it could be pretty cool. We will never own factories. Uh, we may never own factories, uh, but I think we might own the crafting of... I think... Uh, you know what? I, I still think there's a chance, but, may, you know, feel free to spam copium, but I still think that there's a chance. Because uh, they... they they make it seem like we might own refineries. So if we might own refineries, why wouldn't we own factories? But yeah, I still hold I still hold out hope for that. Because to be honest, I don't think it's it's sort of what keeps me going with Star Citizen. I don't think I would continue playing it if I didn't think we were, there was a chance that we would be more involved in this process. Bad escorts and long waits and quantum travel are not the same as the small want to make a friendly wager i would but we probably would be both dead before they actually got in so we lose a 10-year bet i mean what if we're not going to be here in 10 years you know look at look outside look at the world scale package deliveries and resupplies who want more atmospheric flight and diverse locations to visit and Star Citizen is going to need to focus on creating the missions and economic draws that encourage this melding of cargo hauling gameplay, if not force it through economic means. Since we've yet to see how cargo hauling might change anytime soon, this is... And I think this is the big key thing that they showed, is scrap was being sold. And I am going to, while the video is, is up, I'm listening to it. Um, another point that leaves the community in a bit of mystery. This model's been talked about, it makes sense, and it seems to be how things are being set up. But CIG has still not made any major comments about how this will come to be, or whether the whole C will be part of this change when it is added to the game. But the change will be big. The whole C hints at an economic shift coming to the game, which in turn will change how- See, I, I don't think it really does. Um, there, there was, I can't remember, I think it was a roadmap roundup or a monthly report, and I want to try and find it, where they kind of mentioned how it was just more of a test. Uh, this will be like seeing if it works. Uh, so I'm pretty sure, uh, I don't remember, I, I definitely, it's up on the React channel somewhere, uh, whether it was ISC or, it might have been ISC where they were, where they were just basically said, we're putting it in there and we're going to see what happens. So they don't actually know what's going to happen yet. So I don't think that they're confident or want to put in any major economic changes until they know what the game can handle. I mean, it is less SCU boxes, just so you know, it's less entities on the whole C than there is if they use 32 SU boxes, less entities on the whole C than are on the uh, C2, right? Because there's 696 entities on the C2, and I think it was about 400 or or, or less or like 100 on the, uh, the whole C. So keep that in mind that it, it may cause less problems than other things. So we assume that it'll not break the servers but i don't know and i don't think they know either and the uh the problem with that is that's what they've communicated to us i would like to find it i like to always have my references to things but i i also don't want to ignore the video that's in front of me <clears throat> but it sounds like the they're very unsure and i don't think at 320 maybe in 320.1 or 321 or 322 or 323 we'll see something in terms of a big economic change where you're actually trading large uh, quantities of a lot of different things but i think it's going to be scrap and waste to start and that's it well, which missions is boring. need to work as well right right now cargo was only traded not hauled but in the future, these factions, locations, and even hopefully other players will need to be able to assign temporary ownership and responsibility to another player through missions or beacons to even allow players to learn how to use this cargo hauling system. Yeah. Because you shouldn't have to go and spend all of that money to buy the cargo. You should just be able to haul it around like it's your job. And where would these jobs be coming from? The original factory building the spaceship that needs those materials in bulk? 
or the space station in orbit that has to see the whole seat in the first place, both. which can then assign missions to ship the goods back down. In, in the long term, both, right? Uh, the mission will come from the... I mean, I, the fact that there's no, like, dock cargo area down on the cities, especially after a Lorville rework, is really disappointing. Um, you know, I guess it was the external rework. Now we do need an internal rework as well because the fact that I'm not going down to a specific location um, that is, like, the dock, the cargo area, the commodity area, you know, things like that, I think is was a, a really kind of problematic thing. I think wherever the dock is down on Hurston would provide missions from various places uh, because they would have their delivery done from within the city, you know, over trains or, uh, you know, little ships down the roads that they have or whatever, right? And the uh, from there, you would then get your mission at the cargo deck down on Lorville and then up to Everus, and then Everus would provide you missions. But the thing is, is that mission can still be from a Hurston factory, right? Because the delivery, you know, the person who's paying you is the one who decides the mission. But where you pick it up from is most likely going to be one of these cargo-related areas. I have These DJ. are all the kind of complications that need to be worked out on the cargo and economic it. side for a ship like the Halsey to work correctly. And this may be the whole sea problem, but the larger whole series ships can't land on planets loaded up either. And with ship wear and tear and control surfaces aiming to change the consequences of atmospheric flight, many other ship pilots also might not find it worth the trouble. With this big ship getting we'll closer and closer, finally untethered case. by technical issues, the need for a proper update to the economy has become very clear. With no confirmation so far of what might happen when this ship launches, we may be looking at a deflated launch for one of the most anticipated ships in the game. Oh, yeah. But there are some things we can be fairly sure are coming with the Hull C. Let me show you what will be included with the ship in Alpha 3.20 and what we're still hoping will be. Okay, let's see. The original Cargo Refactor earlier this year was focused entirely on updating cargo to be physicalized and interactable in-game. Up until this year, when you bought commodities, they really only existed as placeholder representations in your cargo, but findable cargo elements would be interactable. Now, everything exists on the same system, driven by PES, always able to be recovered, Yo, stolen, or transferred. Best. This has led to a boom in piracy and much more interesting scenarios in all missions if you bring a tractor beam along. While the game is still polishing the edge cases on that update, the next cargo refactor is actually not far behind. This is mainly centered around freight elevators. These are those random spots off to the side of your hangar that you never care to visit. Interestingly, the work scheduled for these elevators actually extends into Q4 at the current time, but the work being done comes from the landing zone team on the art side. So it's possible they will be implemented while still being worked on, but judging by the recent explanation of the process, I doubt it. I doubt it. But what these freight elevators will do is introduce physical cargo loading and unloading. So not only can it be stolen and acquired out there in the wild, as a cargo hauler, you will either have to load it up all yourself in one of many sizes of boxes or hire NPCs or other players to do it for you. This will factor into the expenses in both time and money when taking part in this profession. And that is, this is one of the most exciting screens for cargo haulers. Uh, but I think that they're also not going to love the three hour <laughs> time that it will take to load 592 SCU. Now, I think that that's good. And then like balance sheet is very interesting. Faction rebate total. Like there's a lot of information that's, that's really kind of exciting and cool here. Um, like plans, none of this is final. Obviously it says concept work in progress, but you can take a look and be like, Hmm, very interesting. Right. Um, I, we need this so bad. Right. And then you add crew to reduce the time, but it obviously takes cost when taking part in this profession. And you'll be able to spend more of one or the other, depending on your priorities. 
This is also the reason for ships like the Nomad, Hull Series, and Raft, which aim to cut down on loading time. These freight yeah. elevators will likely come with another feature that's been long awaited as well, persistent hangars. With persistent hangars, players will be able to have their own hangar at each location that always remains as you left it. This will allow players to store cargo, loot, and ships in a location that is only available to them and their party, and can be used for changing out parts, loading a ship with supplies, and more. These hangars will likely also cost a fee at some point, adding to the money sinks that will encourage players to take jobs. Now, in the first implementation, and from what we can see of the Hull C, we will Who only be seeing the cargo loading. I mean, I think it works perfectly fine with uh, with refineries. I think I think refinery timer, and this is exactly the same, man. You go ahead, you set, hey, I, I'm going to buy 4,000 SCU of copper, and that'll take, you know, it'll be delivered to you in, I guess, let's say five hours, six hours, maybe 24 hours. Then you come back, you pick it up later. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine with that. I I mean, I'll put it out to you guys. What do you guys think? But the I just don't really have an issue. Like, even here, uh, awaiting for your arrival at Cargo Deck Zero to begin transfer. And there's a little timer there. And the amount, and then we'll see that there's a timer to deliver it as well. Putting timer for now. No NPCs, no jobs, just a certain amount of time to wait while the cargo is loaded, and then you go. Yeah. I assume this will be the case for all ships in whichever update this happens in, but we'll have to wait for confirmation on that. We'll also have to hope for better payouts if you have to wait longer to load your cargo. Then there are also the vehicle tractor beams, which we've seen a lot of this year and we know are being worked on. These will make loading and unloading ships much easier as they can carry significantly more than our multi-tools. Will they They'll be likely functional? be released alongside freight elevators, and considering the 3.20 method of loading cargo, I think we can assume both of those will come at a later date. I think he's but maybe right. Not. If you want to learn more about them, I'll leave an explainer for these tractor beams linked down below. I think he's 100% right there. We're not going to see that in 3.20, otherwise they'd be talking about it. Ultimately, the Hull Sea is going to be a test of CIG's philosophy of releasing a ship only when its gameplay can support it. At this point, the raft was a push. It is a cargo hauler, yes, but the true benefit of the ship has been lost for years. Now that benefit has the chance to shine alongside the Hull C, but how long will it? Yeah, the raft was one of the only times I've ever seen Space Tomato salty. He was so mad. He was like, they said that they wouldn't release these ships without their gameplay, and then they released the raft. He was so mad. It was a great. Take. Ultimately, I'm most concerned with the economy being updated with this ship. I can wait another update for freight elevators, persistent hangars, and vehicle tractor beams, but the economy in Star Citizen simply can't be left alone anymore at this point. So we'll be paying close attention to the messaging surrounding that part of the game in the lead up to 3.20. But they can message any way like they want. If you'd like to follow they along with been. us, consider subscribing for more. And if you want to get deeper into the games, news, development, and community, check out my weekly podcast either on the second YouTube channel or over on your favorite audio service. I love I bring in a new podcast. guest every week to discuss our favorite space games, hey, they're, but they're we like generally that. focus on Star Citizen, linked down below. And if you're really enjoying the content, consider checking us out on Patreon. Our patrons are the reason we keep this going, and we offer exclusive videos, behind the scenes, and referral randomizer perks to those who support. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next. Yeah, I thought that that was really, really in depth. Very well done. Uh, very, very well researched. And uh, I think he covered everything. I mean, it really comes down to now uh, what they're going to let us trade and how interesting is it going to be in 320. And it feels like it's not going to be that interesting. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be this dynamic, massive change to the way um, we trade in 320. But it is one of those stepping stone things that could get us there and we'll see but yeah i i just i look forward to moving that number of boxes but it doesn't mean that it's going to be i guess like super fun or anything i think it's going to feel very much like the rest of the things and uh yeah 
I don't know. I it, it's this is such a tough one for me. It's a ship I've waited for forever. It's a ship that I'm super excited for, but I'm way more excited to walk around the inside of it and get a feel for what a very big new version of Misk feels like and looks like rather than move a bunch of cargo into my ship and just go from Everest Harbor to Baijini Point, you know? Meh. We'll have to see.